All right, y'all, I got this baby bird I've been watching over here. As we've been fishing, it fell off the ship. I gotta do something with it. I can't stand watching something drown. You good? All right, I'm trying to put you up here on the top. All right, I'm trying to give you a little... <laughs> They're like, holy <laughs> flying baby. <laughs> baby can fly. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? Jesse Southern Reels Fishing back out in my kayak, as you can see. And I'm pretty excited about that today. I'm gonna to be doing a big push for some flounder and maybe some sheep's head, depending on how the flounder are biting, really. I'm gonna get baited up, start jigging some bucktails along these ships here and see if we can maybe catch some flounder. So wish me luck. All right, y'all, basic jigging setup, tandem rig, bucktail on the bottom, gulp. I've got a Quantum Acrist AC101 HPT flipping switch and a Star Rods Stellar Light jigging rod, I guess you would call it. Well, now I'm going to be working down these ships and just uh, see if we can catch some flounder. It's like a muddy bottom, kind of. How many tail biters are going to run into today? Probably a lot. Oh, wow. Well, that didn't take long. So, yeah, I guess there are flounder here. <laughs> First drop. Small guy, but <laughs> that's a good sign. Starting with a three quarter ounce weight bucktail. Like I say I try to stay as light as I can on my rigs. Sometimes you have to go heavier, just kind of stay in touch with it, be able to feel what it's doing. You, you kind of want to make sure you can feel the bottom when it gets on it. But you don't want it like face planting into it. Like I say, I always try to get on the bottom and then give it a crank and then start jigging at that point. Keep it just off the bottom. It really helps with the snagging issue. Which, you know, bucktails being anywhere from four to six dollars a piece, you really don't want to be losing too many of them. Yeah, I'll take that one on that first drift. Didn't get one this time. Oh, there, yeah, got something there. Smells like a little, a little guy. I hope they get bigger than this. I'm trying to have a fish fry. Thank you, little brother. Keep on eating. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, that feels decent. A little better. Not really. <laughs> About the same, actually. Little guy. I want to want it. Didn't you realize it? That one feels better. Yep. I might have my first keeper. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to be a keeper. Let me get in that net for Measure this dude real quick. He's yeah, 18 inches. Yep, that one's going in the bag. So basically, here's my setup. I got this big old loop I'll be putting them on today. You know, cut the gills and let them bleed out and then get them on ice. I'm going to get right back in the middle of these ships. What you get, you get the current kind of going through these ships and it creates little eddies and pockets in here. Gives the fish somewhere to shelter from the current. But it's, I mean, it's a perfect staging spot for flounder to sit here and ambush. Stuff coming by, bait fish and everything. I mean, this in between these ships, <laughs> this is a killer spot to catch flounder, basically is what I'm saying in short. I mean, you'll get them along the sides of them too, but I've always seen to catch more like in between them. Another thing with flounder, you definitely want the current moving. It's just, it's better to be drifting and fishing. They just seem to bite better that way. Kind of matches their natural state of being up sitting and watching for bait to come by. That's another little guy. See, that one I actually got on the bucktail because I was paying attention to it this time. It was a little one. fish on and I'm tangled. What the hell is going on? Come on, get off. 
lord. I, uh, I don't think I lost him too. Oop, he's still there. Still tangled. Oop, there went my goat flying. Flying are fun. These little guys tearing these little guys up. Man, well, give me that goat back. I was going to say that I like rotating goats. Basically, take them off and rotate them. If the bite is good, rarely do you even get a chance to do that. To be honest, the bite is slow, and you've had a goat bait on your line for a good 10 or 15 minutes. Take it off and throw it back in the juice, and basically you do what they call recharging it and throw a, a fresh one on. Times like that is when it's good to use jigs that don't have keepers on them, wire keepers, because you can slip them on and off easier. The unfortunate side effect to those is that the fish can also slip them off easier. So it's like a catch 22 there. There we go. Yeah, I don't think it's a keeper though. Yeah, little guy. Another 18. Okay. That's a toad. I think that's a toad. I think it's a flounder. Yeah. Bike turning on. All right, this one here might be short. Lay down. Lay down. Oh, it's 17. That's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Woohoo! Heck <laughs> yeah, y'all. Yeah, that's a nice one there. This one is, ooh, 19, 19, heck yeah, I'll take it. Well, folks, I am thoroughly exhausted. It was a heck of a day. First part of the day, which would probably be part one of the trip video, was killer for Flounder. Started off awesome. Did a little bit of a lull at the tide change over and then picked right back up to awesome again. So had a limit plus, so it was definitely a good day for Flounder. Thanks again for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the content and I will definitely see you again soon. Peace.